Hey, this is Mandu here. Welcome to Spreadsheet 101, getting your sheets together. Today we're going to do a quick crash course on how to use Google Sheets, which is an essential skill to have when it comes to project management, data organization, and cleaning, and for automation and motion graphics. So let's get started with the basics. Calculations. To do simple calculation or use formula in Google Sheets or even Microsoft Excel, we click on the cell and we type in equals and we start with maybe perhaps 100 plus 50 for addition for subtraction let's do 100 minus 50 for multiplication 100 asterisk 50 and then for division equals 100 slash 50 so we can use a simple way to use Google Sheet as a calculator we can also do calculations with uh, by referencing cell we're gonna type in equals and we're gonna select cell A3 plus cell B5 and we hit return and if I were to change the value of A3 to maybe about 600 uh, the result updates uh, automatically let's go to B5 and do the same thing let's change it to a high number and yes we get a uh, hundred thousand and six hundred um, next thing we can learn is to add up all the cells in each column uh, to do so we're gonna use our first formula called sum so type in equal sum bracket and let's select the range that you want to uh, add up so this is going to be this four cell and you can hit return or close the bracket and you can see we have the sum of all these four numbers uh, it, like I said it's it's we're referencing cell so if I update the values here it's going to update here as well so we can do the same thing for other columns by uh, typing in the same formula and changing it to B instead or you know selecting the corresponding cells what we're gonna do instead we're gonna copy it over by command C on the cell of the formula and command V and if you double click on it notice that Google Sheet has automatically changed the, the cell range for you so that's one way of quickly uh, copying uh, formulas over instead of manually typing uh, Google Sheets going to correspond to the column that you, are, you have placed it on. Another way to do so, to copy uh, formulas across, is to go to the bottom right hand corner of the cell with the formula and click and drag to the right in this case. And you can see it's copy all the formula across. So many different ways uh, to do the same thing, right? Um, so that's, that's called relative cell reference and next thing we can learn is absolute cell reference what if so here's a scenario what if I only want the first I only want to add up the first three value for each column right and the fourth value will, will always be a uh, cell a6 which is 58 so to type it out it will be sum right I'm going to select the first three thing first three cell in each column plus and then uh, a6 so if I were to copy across right I'm gonna get the same result as what I did earlier with sum. Uh, if we double click on it, I want this fourth value to be always A6. So to do so, we need to use absolute cell reference. We can do, uh, we can do that by typing the dollar sign in front of the cell letter and number for our fourth value. So that's what, so if I were to copy it over now, okay, it's gonna just lock my fourth value to cell A6 uh, the dollar sign does that it locks the cell letter and the number you can see it's it's uh, all the other columns have the same have uh, the same setup the same formula right first three which add up the first three value and add and use the uh, cell A6 as the fine as a fourth value so that's called absolute cell reference Okay, so let's learn about counting cells. There's many ways to count cells uh, using formulas and you can count cells based on uh, certain criteria. So the most basic one is equals count, right? And you, if you were to select the range that we want, it's just gonna count all the, uh, all the cells that has number in it. So if I were to type in text, you know, it's not, the number's not gonna increase, but if I were to insert another number, 700, you know the count becomes uh, 13 and then uh, but if I want to count everything over here we can use count a everything as long as a value let's count it 
So right now like 19 of the cells are filled up. So let's make this 20 and you can see count A is 20. And then we can even count uh, based on the criteria. So count if, and then you select the range that you want. So maybe in this case, I want to count numbers that are more than 100. So after the range, type in a double quote and then maybe more than a thousand. And then close the quote and close the bracket. And so over here, there's only one number that's more than a thousand, which is a hundred thousand. And uh, if I want to count just a uh, number of instances for uh, this, how many times text that would text appear in this data range, we can type in count if, select our data range, and then we can type in comma, double quote, and we can type in text, and then close the bracket. So there's six of them. And that's how you count cells in, I guess, four different ways. Uh, count, count A, and count if. So now we're gonna learn how to input sequential data quickly. Uh, so previously, you would click on the cell and, uh, and click on the bottom right-hand corner and drag it across. We can easily duplicate the values or the formula that the cell has across uh, other columns, right? But if we were to select this two pair, uh, this pair of number one and two, and do the same thing, we're gonna get you know an increasing number from one to eight. So Google Sheets knows that it's an ascending number, sequential number. We can do so for the month, and we can do so for the days of the week. And if it goes beyond Sunday, it's gonna go back to Monday, right? And uh, another way to input a list of number instead of manually typing one, two, three, or, or even like just using this method of dragging it down to get a list of sequential numbers, what we can do is use a formula called sequence. So we're gonna type in equal sequence bracket, and we're gonna type in two numbers. The first number is the number of rows, and the second number is the numbers of columns. So 10 comma one. So this is gonna give me 10 numbers. And I can do so if I want it to be 50, and it's easily you know, creating 50 numbers uh, just based on one formula. And I can even change it to, let's have it in the second column, let's see what happens. Hit two, and we get an error. This is because we have some cell values over here, and it's obstructing, it's preventing uh, our formula from writing over. So we gotta delete the cell values here, and you can see uh, our sequential number populates one, two, three, four, five, six from uh, across rows. All right, so the next thing we're gonna learn is how to combine text. Uh, one way to do so is type in equal, select the cell that you want, and you type in ampersand, and then you select the next cell that you want. Uh, it's gonna match the text together without any space in between. So that's pretty tedious if I want the four, I wanna add these four cells together with space. Uh, another way to add text together is to use this formula called concatenate. So I'm gonna type in equals con concatenate and then bracket and then select the cell range and I hit return. So again it's gonna add this this time we have all four cell values, right? Uh, but there's no space in between. So that sucks for us. So the last way is to use text join. Uh, text join allow you us to use a delimiter which is basically uh, we can specify what goes in between each cell when we combine them together. So we type text join bracket so we're gonna put in the delimiter in double quotes. So in this case, it's a space and then comma. And then uh, we need to type in, should we ignore empty cells? And yes, true, we do ignore empty cell. True, comma, and then we finally select the cell range. Okay, so if I was, so I got my, this is not a sentence. This is a sentence, it updates accordingly. If I were to get rid of like one cell, right? You see, notice that uh, there's no extra space in between because it's ignoring this cell in text join. Let's put it back, this is a sentence. And now, for, if you want to split it back into this, uh, this array, we can do so by using the formula split. Equal split, select the cell that you want, comma, and then the delimiter. So what, what are we gonna use to separate it? And we're gonna use space. So um, put them in double quotes and hit return. And this is how we combine and split text. 
So we come to my favorite part of Google Sheets, which is housekeeping and making our data a little bit more pleasant to look at. Uh, so we're going to learn how to put alternating colors for our rows. We're going to do conditional formatting. So if we were to type in a special character, in this case an exclamation mark, it's going to highlight itself uh, with an orange fill. We're going to learn how to freeze columns in headers. So they always stick to the top and the left hand side and we can have drop down menus and we can have check boxes all right so let's begin with an empty sheet uh, beginning with the al alternating colors let's go to format alternating colors and you get an option of like uh, what colors you want so right now only cell a1 is selected uh, that it, uh, that has alternating colors we gotta apply it to everything so let's click on the right uh, on the on the range data range and we can select we can just uh, clear away uh, A1 and just reselect the cell range we want for alternating colors and click OK. We can change the colors and we can even add footer if we want. Click done. All right. And let's freeze our columns and rows so it'll, when, no matter, whenever we scroll, it will always be on the top. So to freeze columns, we need to go to, let's see, view, freeze. So let's do one row. So you, and notice that there's this uh, like a thicker bar for our row one, right? So you got to scroll down, it will always be on top. So this is handful. Let's just say you have like like a header over here, and you you are looking at uh, lots of data as you scrub down. Uh, another way to do this, let me undo that, is quickly freeze columns. Is to just grab the top left hand corner, the bars at the top left hand corner, and just drag it to wherever you want. Can freeze multiple columns and rows by using this method. Uh, let's see. The next thing we want to do is to do some conditional formatting. So let's have uh, every time the word highlight appear, or maybe whenever there's an exclamation mark, highlight itself. So uh, let's go to format conditional formatting. And again, just like alternate color, let's have it apply to all range. Let's clear this B6 uh, data range. And you can hit Command A to select all the cell range. Click OK. And it's going to format. And so here's the rules. And uh, when it's, here's the rules for applying the formatting. So we're going to select uh, text contain, exclamation mark, exclamation point. And we can make it, make it orange fill. And we can have a white text. And we can even make it bold. Hit done. And we can always, and you can add more rules, you can stack on rules, you can delete rules if you want. So if you were to type in exclamation mark anywhere now, it will always have your highlights itself. So maybe it's, it's, it's pretty, this might be handy when you're making the header and you just want to auto highlight uh, itself without manually doing it. Uh, so that's for conditional formatting and now we're gonna learn how now to create some checkboxes let's go to it's very simple go to insert checkbox and you command C to copy it and paste it wherever you want and for to create a drop down menu uh, we can go to data data validation and we can select now criteria list of items and we can maybe just name uh, give a bunch of name bin J Bubblegum and click save. So right now, if I, I click on that, that drop down men, uh, button, you know, I'm gonna get these three options. And yeah, you can it's just like check boxes, copy whatever you want, copy the uh, the check uh, the drop down menu and paste it wherever you want. And to make it empty, just hit the delete key, uh, the backspace key, and this will clear uh, the options. So we come to the end of the tutorial. I hope this has been helpful for you. Thank you for watching my tutorial and I'll see you next time.